The Rob Ash Show featuring Drake University football. Head football coach Rob Ash and your host Mick Trier. Brought to you in part by Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leaders. And by Home Team Pizza, free, fast delivery. It's a hit. Welcome to the Rob Ash Show. I'm Mick Trell, along with Drake football coach Rob Ash. And coach, a hard-hitting football game on Saturday when the Bulldogs came out of the bottom end, 28-20 to Butler, but a good, good football team. Listen, Nick, that was a great football team. Butler played extremely well. Uh, Mickens, the tailback, is a premier running back in the nation, as far as I'm concerned. I think he could play anywhere. And their defense, Butler's defense, played extremely well all day. I thought our team played hard. It was a great game. Butler just came out on top. I know one of the things, of course, the Bulldogs have an excellent defensive line. And for this Mickens to get as many yards as he did tells how good this uh, kid is. And I know your game plan going in was maybe to try and keep him on the sidelines and you keep the ball a little longer or yeah. just outscore him. How did you feel as the game was going along? What did you think you were going to have to do? Well, Mick, I thought our defense played really hard and very well against an outstanding offense, especially just as a run game. Uh, you know, we, we held Mickens a lot of times to short yards. He got a few big plays, but he never got a, a long touchdown run until the fourth quarter when we finally wore down a little bit. And I think part of, the, you know, part of the game plan was to try to keep him on the sideline, as you say, try to score some points, and our offense just didn't get enough done until too late in the game. If we could have generated more offense I think we might have been able to hang in there but it just wasn't in the cards. One of the things we're going to see in the highlights here in a moment is the uh, fact that a couple of plays go the other way it's a Drake Bulldog victory. Uh, it really could have been Nick very easily could have been a win for Drake uh, we had a tipped pass that uh, was caught on the deflection for a Butler touchdown early in the game that just as easily could have been hit in the ground and then we had a, our trick play of the week a reverse fake reverse pass that was wide open and we didn't connect we usually connect on that we usually knock down the pass and it would have been a Drake lead maybe 14 nothing instead of being behind 14 six at the half that would have made a big difference well I'll tell you what it was a heck of a football game we got some great highlights to show you especially this Mickens kid we'll take a look at the highlights right after this quality style, luxury, everything you've come to expect from Buick, selection, service, value, all you can expect when you visit Capital City Buick. From the Skylark to the Park Avenue Ultra, Capital City Buick offers Central Iowa's largest selection of new Buicks and has quietly built a reputation for genuine service, not pressure. Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leader. Hi, this is Tom Baldwin, owner of Home Team Pizza. That's the only place you can get Des Moines Super Large or Large, that fantastic 16-inch pizza. You already know we make our dough every day from scratch, and so it's the freshest anywhere. And you already know we guarantee delivery in 30 minutes or you get your pizza free. But believe it or not, there's still some people that don't know that our Large or Large pizza with single topping is only $7.99, and it's absolutely delicious. So call Home Team Pizza right now for your Large or Large. You may have made a difference in someone's life. We can't tell you their name or anything about them. We can tell you that by using or being a designated driver like 80 million other Americans, you've made a very real contribution. You see, drunk driving fatalities declined by 32% in the last 10 years. We salute America's designated drivers, and we urge everyone to join you. By doing what's right, you're making things better. A message from Budweiser. When the delivery time of gasoline, diesel fuel, and motor oil supplies is crucial to Iowa industry, timely personal service and quality Conoco products at an affordable price that service professionals and their customers can depend on. Parker Oil Company of Des Moines, Iowa. Welcome back to the Rob A. Show. Well, Coach, before we take a look at the highlights of this football game, what a great crowd on Saturday. Had a great buildup for a good football game, and they were treated to a good football game. Mick, we were really happy. That was an all-time record crowd since Drake went to non-scholarship football, 6,700 people or whatever, homecoming. I guess the uh, Over the Hill gang was there from the Johnny Bright vintage uh, years at Drake. And, you know, it was a great day for a game. I think everybody who came to the game saw a real treat. They saw a great op opponent 
here at Drake Stadium. They saw the home team play a really, you know, a tough, hard-fought game against a good opponent, and it, and it came down to the wire. So I've got to think they got their money's worth. Let's uh, take a look at the highlights of this football game, and you're going to see what we're talking about with this Mickens character. Well, I'll tell you, it was a, like I say, it was a great day for a game. Big crowd on our sideline. Our players were very, very focused and, and very ready for the challenge of trying to stop Butler. But as you watch number 32, uh, you're going to see, you know, what it, in fact it was, what kind of a challenge it was to stop this young man. Uh, Mickens, of course, played at the University of Indiana, uh, transferred there after being there, a linebacker there for three years. He can really run the ball, but our defense swarmed and got to him a lot. Here's Craig Ortworth early in the game, making a good play. They tried to run outside early, and they found out that our defense flowed real well to the football, and uh, Mickens ended up getting most of his yards on cutback plays. Uh, here's a, a big play, though, early. Uh, first passing situation, Don Stark picking off. We blitzed. Uh, uh, Butler in the first passing situation it was man-to-man. -man. Donnie was free and made the interception. So we started off in great shape, got the ball right around midfield. Uh, and then we started out on offense here. This is our first drive. Roy Fletcher to Jason Buckingham. Uh, Buckingham gets hit in the back there. It was a good clean play, but he, he injured a bruised a rib, and he, that was his only play of the day, and he was out. This is a fourth down play right here. Charlie Schimberg, fourth and two. We went for it early, trying to pull out all the stops to win the game. Charlie easily got the first down. Might have even scored if he'd been able to keep his feet, but it was a good job keeping that drive alive. So we came back here now, Fletcher dropping back. He finds Damian Mansell, who had gone in to replace Buckingham. Damian's only a freshman, but look at the run he makes after he catches the ball. And he really ended up, after being, you know, not expecting to play very much, he really did a good job. Here's our hippo offense. This is not a joke. Uh, Todd Sauer, defensive tackle, goes in at uh, fullback. We call this the hippo. He's going to get the ball off tackle here to the left. Todd really wanted to score. He's still moving his legs here, <laughs> even though they're up in the air. But I'll tell you, that, that really makes the defense think. He's 270-some pounds. Then we run behind him on the next down, also behind Charlie Henry, number 85, and we drive the ball in for a touchdown on our first drive. So a perfect start to the game for Drake, intercepting Butler on their first possession and then scoring uh, on the first time we have the ball. So it was a good start. Still playing well against Mickens. Kevin Tippett, who played a fine game, number 97 at linebacker. Uh, we got in pretty good position here, although Butler had a couple good runs and was able to move the ball across midfield. Now here's a, a Mickens again off tackle. Todd Sauer just, you know, beating his block, getting across and making the hit. Then here's the first big play for Butler in the game. There's play action here to Mickens. Quarterback stall has the ball. Sauer flushes him out of the pocket. This ball's up in the air too long. Uh, Kerman Mason in good shape, tips the ball away, but he tipped it up, couldn't get it tipped down. And on the deflection, the uh, receiver for Butler picked the ball up. We hit him. He held onto the ball, gave him credit. It was a great play. They made their PAT. We had missed ours, so it was seven to six. Meanwhile, on the kickoff before that, after our first touchdown, Charlie Henry had gotten hurt. So now we're down to running without either one of our two stop, uh, top tight ends. That was a pass over the middle to Jude Jules, trying to get our offense rolling again here on our second possession after Butler's touchdown. Here's Fletcher again, dropping back, steps up in the pocket and hits Mansell. Look at Damian refusing to go down. He's a fine runner after he gets the ball. He's a good, good receiver. But unfortunately, we got stalled out there and had to punt. I'm not going to show you all these punts, but I did put one on here just to remind me to, to mention Matt Sneller's name. Matt punted for over a 40-yard average, did a great job of keeping Butler pinned back, and our coverage was excellent on the punts all day. It was a strong part of our game, uh, with the exception that we did get one punt blocked, but otherwise Matt had a great day. Now here's Mickens, making a couple of guys miss. Big, big, big guy. He's 220 pounds. Uh, Kerman Mason, probably about 170 or 165. So. You know, it's, it's a mismatch when he gets out in the secondary. Now, we did get a lot of times when we stopped him. There was a good blitz. We got some, but you noticed, even when we hit Mickens behind the line, he's, he squirmed for extra yardage. This is a, a sequence here in the second quarter where Butler had uh, been moving down after Mickens' long run. On those two runs we just showed you, uh, first and second down, we, we stopped, uh, stopped Butler. And here's a third down play. We're going to blitz from the outside. You can see the outside linebacker, Scott Lupori, coming in. We just, uh, the blitz, I think, caught Butler by surprise, uh, took them, uh, not only not giving them the first down, but moving a field goal kicker back about eight yards, and he missed the kick. So that was a big defensive stop by our guys with two good run stops and a blitz on the pass play. Missed field goal, so that Butler still didn't score. It's still 7-6 to six in the second quarter. And then here's the, the big play, in my opinion, in the game offensively. A big miss. We fake the, the reverse here. Roy still has the ball. And Rob Berkeley is wide, wide, wide open. Everybody went with the reverse. Nobody went with Berkeley, but uncharacteristically, Roy missed him. That could have been a touchdown for Drake, but didn't happen. So still 7-6. We're still in pretty good shape. Defense doing a nice job there against the fullback. 
Butler still running the ball. Mickens ended up carrying it 45 times. Wow. Many times we did do a good job. Todd Sauer had a good game, tip it again. Matt Garvis played solid inside. So we stopped Butler. And uh, then after we could not get a first down, we had to punt and Butler rushed everybody. Uh, they put everybody on the line and we, we had a blocking assignment that was a problem. Uh, one of our guys missed his assignment, so they blocked the punt. Ben Wolford does a nice job here getting the ball so that Butler couldn't run it in. This sets up one of the probably the highlight of the day defensively. It's going to be a goal line stand. First down, they hand off to Mickens. And Garvis and Todd Lee, number 63 and 55, make the stop. Second down, they're going to run wide to the left. Look at Craig Ortworth at the top of the screen, fighting off the block. B.J. Hellyer and Matt Garvis get there to finish up Mickens. That was second down. Now on third down, watch the fullback, number 33. He's going to come out of the backfield. We're going to blitz the uh, outside backers again, just like we had done earlier. The quarterback makes a great play to get it off, but Kerman Mason stops the fullback, so it's fourth and goal. And watch this, when they try to jump over the line, Todd Lee, number 63, and Craig Ortworth, 99, they're both going to submarine in from the outside, stopped Butler fourth and uh, inches, and it was a great, great way for us to go into halftime. Back to take a look at the second half highlights after we show you some of the folks that helped make this show possible. heading to the second half. you got to be wondering how you're going to stop this character. You're bringing linebackers, you're bringing everybody well, defensively. We, we felt pretty good. He had 99 yards at the half, and we had the ball first to start off the second half, but unfortunately, here's how the second half started. On our second play, Arroyo overthrew a wide open receiver there, and uh, they got the ball, Butler got the ball in great position. Probably the worst thing could have happened, because not only did it give Mickens extra carries, put our defense on the field earlier than they kind of expected, kind of caught us by surprise that we had the turnover so early in the second half. And make matters worse, they only had about 40 yards to drive, and, and Mickens did a nice job taking it right in. Key turn of events at the start of the second half. Took a 7-6 game, gave Butler a 14-6 lead, all really from a moment to a day for either team. And it just came at a bad time, because no turnover comes at a good time. Uh, we came back on offense here with a little flanker screen to Rob Berkeley, number 7. Now, Robbie does a good job here getting some extra yards. Garrett LaFleur hustling to get a block in front. And on this play, Roy's going to fake the ball on a running play to the right, and he's going to come back with the ball to the left. It's a play fake, nice fake, fooled everybody. Roy got out in front here. Ed Jennings with a nice block. Roy was afraid might get hit from behind there, but luckily he fell down in time. Unfortunately, on this series, uh, third down here, they brought the pressure, and uh, Roy got flushed out of the pocket. Receiver was covered, and he had to scramble. Uh, Charlie Schimberg kind of got open here in the flat, and this ball was, again, just slightly overthrown. We would have had the ball down at the 25 and we had to punt it away. So we made a nice effort after the turnover and the touchdown to come back, but we had to give it back to Butler. Nickens continued to run. Look at that good cut. Put that on because that play was designed to go around the right end or at least off right tackle, and he cuts it clear back to the left and you know gets about 10 or 12 yards. Really tough to stop that kind of play when he has such good vision. Here though, Todd Lee makes a good defensive play. When they tried to run outside, we really did a great job stopping him most of the day. So defense came up, did a tough job there. We got good pressure here from Craig Ortworth on a screen pass. Donnie Stark uh, read it well along with our other defenders. So we put uh, uh, Butler in a fourth down situation here. They put three receivers to the right and tried to hit one of them on a short out pattern. Matt Garvis knocked it down. What a good linebacker Matt is. He had a good strong game and so on that fourth down failure we stopped Butler. But then going into the fourth quarter, the offense had, our offense had failed to produce anything. Nickens continuing to run and run and run and finally they got outside and got ahead of us uh, 21 to 6. But give our offense credit, after doing nothing in the third quarter, that touchdown seemed to wake us up a little bit. And the offense came right back after Butler's touchdown with a good drive. There was a pass to Rich Hoskins, number four, to get a first down and get the drive started, get us out of our own territory a little bit. 
Next play, Fletcher's going to drop back here and throw the flanker screen again to Berkeley, number seven. Uh, Butler brought a lot of pressure, and that gave us the opportunity to use the screen a little bit. Robbie's pretty fast, but Butler's secondary shows that they're pretty quick, too, because they cut him off. But they still kept bringing the pressure. Look at all the white shirts rushing, but they forgot one thing. They have to cover all the receivers. And Damian Mansell, wide open, makes the play. Fletcher hitting beautifully under pressure. So that brought us up to 21 to 12. Here's a big play. Mickens fumbled. The only time he dropped the ball all day, and it bounced right back to him. And then on third and two, another huge play in the game. Third and two, Tommy Becker has great coverage on Gribbons over there on the sideline, but he jumped up. Probably a good thing for Butler that pass was underthrown, because if it had been thrown right, Tommy would have shut it down. We would have had the ball back. Of course, they made us pay for it. Mickens with another outstanding cut way back across the grain to go ahead 28 to 12. Uh, key turn of events, the fumble and the pass that we should have, you know, might have been able to have, we would have had the ball back and a chance to get back in it. Fletcher, though, continued try to, to try to rally us. Here's a real good play action pass over to Hoskins. Dropping back again. Scrambling on third and five, he founds, uh, finds Ed Jennings, who probably didn't expect to play much. Big play there for Ed. And finally, a running game. I think our offense really raised their level here. Matt Conlon off tackle. Charlie Schimberg off tackle. A couple of good runs. And then watch Fletcher drill this one in. I think the touchdown is next. Still uh, about uh, three and a half minutes left in the game. Bullet pass right there to P.J. Jules to make it 28-20. Now we, we kick the ball deep, trying to hold Butler. Did a good job here. Mickens, you know, he carried the ball 45 times. He's still strong. The defense made him punt. We rushed 10, trying to block the punt. Fortunately, he got it away, and when the ball squirted off to the left and rolled down inside the 10, we just had too far to go, not enough time. So Butler ended up with a 28-20 win. The thing about it, the Bulldogs continue to play all the way through on that one. We did. Our team never gives up, Mick. Our players play and play and play and then until the game is over. Even that last drive, we're going two-minute drill trying to get down there. And, and uh, I give them credit. We, we hung in there for a couple breaks. We might have won that game. Let's take a look at the statistics of this football game and you look down at the possession time, they, they own it. Well, you they, don't they, like that. They did. We've, we've been five minutes better than our opponents all year and, and, and Butler got the advantage on us in this game and that was, that was too bad. I think the other, the other thing that uh, you have to give credit to Butler in the, the bottom of the list there, turnovers, they had one which was on their very first possession. They never turned the ball over again and they had no penalties in this game. So it's tough to beat a team when they play that sound and they run the football and they don't turn it over and don't have any penalties. What are you going to do? Let's take a look at the Pioneer Football League standings as well. Well, we're still in good shape in the sense that we, we got that first win over San Diego. They won against Valparaiso. Dayton beat Evansville. So Dayton and Butler are ahead of us. But, you know, what we've got to hope, of course, Dayton plays Butler in a couple of weeks. We hope that uh, Dayton can beat Butler and give them a loss. And then that would set up a, a possibility for us to win the rest of our games and still tie for first. But we got to get by Evansville and Valparaiso first. And don't let those 0-1 records uh, <laughs> confuse you. They're two pretty good teams. You know, right now as you take a look at some of those teams, of course, these are some good teams. It is no easy, <laughs> there is no easy weeks here by, it, by any means. No, it's murderer's row in this conference. And I guess that's good. I hope everybody wins their share. I, to be honest with you, Mick, I was really happy for Brian Fogarty and the San Diego staff. Uh, they came back at the end of the game to beat Valparaiso. 33-27, and uh, you know they're a class staff. Of course, we've beat them already, so we want to see them do well. But I was happy to see them win the game. All righty, Coach. When we come back, we'll take a look at our play of the game and our player interview as well. We'll do that right after this. I've been doing this forever. I don't know how to do anything else. I'm not qualified. I can't. Uh, I can hammer and stuff. I can tear stuff up. Favorite thing about stand-up comedy is when you have a great show and then people want their money back. <laughs> You'd really turn it on when you get on stage. That's what, that's what it's all about, that time on stage, that get up there and just do what you do and then say thank you, good night, and don't talk to me after the show. <laughs> I, I hate people. I'm not a people person. <laughs> Are you looking for that just right place to hold your company's or club's Christmas party? Well, you found it at the Bavarian House Restaurant with the Coast of the with scrumptious German second to none. The guys come up to the party at the very end. Two, six, five, five, six, one, two, six, one. With a great view. Add something colorful and healthy. And don't forget to add something a little sinful. Add something steamy and delicious and really pile it on. Then make sure you add the right stuff like good friends. Sunday morning at the Capitol View Dining Room. Brunch at the Best Western Starlight Village downtown once. 
and you'll be back for more. Welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Well, it's time for our Capital City Buick Play of the Game. Here's head coach Rob Ash. This week's play of the week was the fourth play in a four-play goal line stand by our defense against Butler. Right before the halftime, right after a blocked punt had put uh, Butler in position with a first and goal from the Drake Five. What we're going to see is a fourth down play, and you can see Butler had gotten the ball down to within about two feet of the goal line. Fourth down, and they've got the best runner in America in Division I AA who's probably going to get the ball. The play's going to be made by Todd Lee, number 63, angling in here between number 44 and number 77 on a defensive end charge. Todd Lee comes inside, beats his man, and then you can see he's going to wrap up Mickens' legs right here while Mickens tried to jump. Meanwhile, Craig Ortworth underneath here had also uh, come in on the inside slant, and he had piled up the pile. And look at all the rest of our defensive guys, also making sure there was no movement, no crease for Mickens to go. It was a great moment for the Drake defense. You can see by the celebration, there's Ortworth, Tippett. Uh, Scott Lupori, all the unsung heroes down here, the tackles in the trenches, and the whole sideline went crazy. Uh, I'm sure the stands were doing the same. It was a great moment in the football game. It kept it to a one-point game at halftime. Great moment for the Drake defense. Time now for our home team pizza player interview and talking about defense. It's a defensive player this week as Todd Kim had an opportunity to talk with Matt Garvis. Well, there are plenty of standouts on the Drake defense this year, and among them, junior middle linebacker Matt Garvis. And, Matt, I know you said uh, you combine that big offensive line that Butler had with a running back like Mickens, and, and that can uh, really be a tough physical afternoon, can it? Yeah, it can. He's, he's probably the best runner we'll see it. You know, 220 pounds is a pretty heavy running back, and they got a you know senior offensive line that a couple people 300 pounds, and they get pretty physical in there. And, you know, we did a good job for the most part handling him, but just didn't work out for us today. I thought uh, you guys did a pretty good job in terms of the physical nature of, of, of holding on to them and, and, and making plays yourself. And, and it seemed like uh, you, when you got penetration, you were able to, to, to do a pretty good job against him. Yeah, we did. I mean, you know, he made some big plays, but, you know, we did all right. I mean, defensive line got some penetration. You know, we just got, we, we gained tackle for the most part, and hopefully he uh, remembers that for next year. in a tough situation. You're going to have to go outside to get the I'm going to be in, uh, in that situation. Uh, there was really no place for him to go, and we, we stopped him pretty good. Well, you guys uh, certainly were excited after that play. That, that was an outburst on the sideline. Yeah, it was. This, you know, gave us a lot of momentum going to halftime, and... Uh, just uh, the offense came out and they had a big turnover and uh, they turned it out. They turned it into big points and uh, we just got too far down to, you know, the offense came back, but uh, they just busted some big plays and it just gets real frustrating once in a while. But, you know, he did all right. Well, it's been a great early season for the defense. Talk a little bit about the change in, in, in going to the 4 3. I know that meant a change in position for you. Yeah, it did, but uh, it's, it's more of an attack defense than what we were last year. and. Uh, Everybody likes it a lot better because we're more going upfield than uh, going sideline to sideline, you know, laterally. But, you know, we all enjoy it, and so it's, it's a better defense for us. And we've been doing pretty good so far, and hopefully it continues to do so. Well, I, I know, obviously, now you're, you're expected to make plays on both sides of the football, right? Yeah, that's my job. And, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I've been, you know, I've been doing it. I like it. I enjoy it, you know, you know just making plays, and that's... You know, defensive line gives me a lot of help, and so does it, so does everybody else. But you know, if that's my job, I'll I'll do it. Well, and and you bring up an interesting point in, in the fact that the defensive line, the way they play, can help you roam free back there, can't they? Yeah, it does. You know, they get some knockoffs on defense on the offensive line, and you know, as long as you know, it helps me stay unblocked and go, flow free to the running back and put some hits on him. But you know, it's a, you know. The offensive line does a good job, you know, and I do a good job. We'll come out on top. Well, it's a the race is a long way from over. It's on to Evansville now. More conference action. Yeah, it is. You know, we can still win this conference going 4-1 and get a little help from uh, other teams in the conference. And we're going to go down to Evansville, play hard, and hopefully come out with a win. Thanks, Matt. That's Matt Garvis, junior linebacker, our player of the week. And congratulations to Matt Garvis and our thank you to Todd Kim. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Drake Bulldogs' upcoming game against Evansville right after this. Quality, style, luxury. Everything you've come to expect from Buick. Selection, service, 
value. All you can expect when you visit Capital City Buick. From the Skylark to the Park Avenue Ultra, Capital City Buick offers Central Iowa's largest selection of new Buicks and has quietly built a reputation for genuine service, not pressure. Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leader. Hi, this is Tom Baldwin, owner of Home Team Pizza. That's the only place you can get Des Moines Super Large or Large, that fantastic 16-inch pizza. You already know we make our dough every day from scratch, and so it's the freshest anywhere. And you already know we guarantee delivery in 30 minutes or you get your pizza free. But believe it or not, there's still some people that don't know that our large or large pizza with single topping is only $7.99. And it's absolutely delicious. So call Home Team Pizza right now for your large or large. This message brought to you by Preferred Risk Insurance, America's non-drinkers insurance company. If we can get all of the athletes and coaches in America buying into the, being all that God's created them to be, to understand that they are something special, then we can have an impact across America like no other group because the athletes and coaches have the strongest influence in America today than any other group. And one way to play, one way to play is rug free, one way to live, one way to be what God wants you to be. Sunday nights, they come to play on TNT. Good guys versus bad guys. Showdowns and shootouts. The chase, the unexpected twist, the magic. And that's why on Sunday nights, we come to play. Sunday Night NFL on TNT. In Des Moines, watch TNT on Channel 27. Welcome back to the Rob A. Show. Well, next up for the Bulldogs is going to be Evansville. Let's take a look at the highlights of uh, last year's action here, Coach. It was our last game of the season, Mick, and we were fighting for second place in the conference. You saw a touchdown pass there to Sean Diggs. There's a sack by Craig Orworth. Of course, Evansville is a great passing team. And what happened in this game is uh, we did a good job running the football. We got the touchdown passes. There was one to, to Diggs earlier and one to Briley. But Evansville came back on us after we had a big lead. We had to stop them at the end of the game, one point behind. And then here at the end of the game, on fourth and five, we hit Mike Stanfell, about a minute left in the game, down by one point. Then on third down and five, we hit uh, Richie Hoskins. And so with about 30 seconds, that the ground caused that fumble. We kept the ball. About 30 seconds left, uh, Billy Willers drilled a field goal for the win. We won 29-27. And uh, of course, it wasn't over till it was over. They came right back after the field goal, all the way down, but Todd DeMoss intercepted the pass to to seal the win. Tremendously exciting football game right down to the last second. As you mentioned, of course, last week we had a defense against the run. This week it's against the air. <laughs> Evansville has a great pass game. They have the Eric Fish, who's a great passer, Hans Hogue, who's an All-American tight end. And we go from the best running game in a conference to the best pass game in a conference. It's uh, night and day, and we've really got to work hard to change gears. Bulldogs got their first loss of the season last week, and uh, now it's time to get back up going again. I got a feeling, though, Drake played so hard last week. It won't take much to get him going. I think our team will play hard because of the conference implications. My concern is Evansville's in the same boat. They lost to Dayton. Both of these teams are backs to the wall. The loser of this game will, for all practical purposes, be out of the conference race. Uh, the winner of the game will be able to hang in there until uh, Dayton and Butler play each other again. So it's a it's a already a must-win situation. Get some people healthy, back going again. Bulldogs will be tough this week. We've got to stay healthy. We had injuries against Butler. We've got to have people back if we have a chance. Going to be a high-scoring game? I have no idea. I hope not. <laughs> I hope our defense can shut them down. All righty, Coach. Good luck to you. Thank you, Mick. That's been the Rob Ash Show. Join us next week again for the Rob Ash Show.